Hello, 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 and welcome to the Slamcast. I'm your host, Greg. Let's get it started, shall we? Um, first and foremost, I'm sure you listeners have already noticed that um, we have a new microphone in the studio. Um, decided since I've been going at this for about a month. I would um, invest in a new microphone and new set of headphones, because why the hell not? And honestly, I am already digging it. I'm getting uh, some instant feedback from this mic into this new headset, and um, I'm able to hear what you guys hear now the second it happens. I don't have to, not that I ever actually listened to these things before I threw them up, but now I get to hear instantly uh, exactly what's going on and no buzzing. So I don't even have to worry about fixing that after I'm done recording. Uh, that's just on its own because the mic isn't uh, absolute garbage, which is great. Less work for me. Um, that's the exact kind of thing that I don't want to have to deal with. Um, but yeah, for those of you that are curious as to um, the specs um, on this setup, a um, the mic is a, a Yeti Blue Pro, or Blue Yeti Pro, excuse me, and um, I got a pair of Audio Technica headphones, which before purchasing them, really had no idea what the brand was and um, the quality behind the he- headphones. Honestly, I'd always just buy cheap headphones and then um, just... Uh, wait until they break within a year. Cheap headphones, cheap earplugs, whatever. They usually break within a year, and then I just spend another like thirty dollars for something of the same caliber. But you know, dropped a decent amount of money on these. I believe they're M50s or something along those lines. Hold on, um, I'm not gonna look it up. Whatever the box is right here, but I'm not gonna bother. One thing I'm not used to, though, is having to stay directly in front of this microphone. Uh, Previously, I just had a Razer headset that I got from a buddy, so the microphone was right in my face, so I got to lean back and move around and whatever. And now I have to deal with this, and yeah, there, that's better. I had too much. I just put it down a bit. I noticed I'm getting a lot of um, strong volumes from my talking. Um, which also another thing I have to look after now with this, but, uh, I think I'm good now. Um, but you know, learning experience, um, hopefully I don't get too loud in any spots, no clipping of the audio. Um, don't want to hurt your guys ears. Hopefully that intro part wasn't too, um, terrible. I put the gain down a bit, so it's picking up a little bit less. I'm leaning a little bit farther from the mic. But yeah, it's nice and crisp and clear, and ooh, isn't that quality? I actually just uh, getting ready to record, you know, noticing different things, and it's picking up all the stuff. It's picking up my zipper, scraping on my uh, chair, um, which obviously I should expect um, from the quality, at least. I mean, uh, yeah, I was just doing some testing, and I was about to start recording, but I had a burp coming out, so I decided to let it wait. But I wanted to see how good the the pickup was from the mic, and whew, it's a funny thing to look at. I think it's mainly because of the the uh, actual audio peaks itself, and you can even hear my throat gurgle before the burp. Not to get too graphic about it. Sorry if that's a little disgusting for you folks. But just listening to it, I find hilarious. I might put it up on SoundCloud or something uh, just for a little goof. But uh, I don't know. It's just me burping and then being freaked out by it because of how loud it is. But, you know, whatever. So, yeah, anyways, that's some big news. Um, I have some other stuff planned, which I don't want to make another purchase. But I don't want to talk about that right now in case I don't go through with it. Um which brings me into my first discussion for this week. I um, came across a video 
I actually think it was before my last recording I came across it, but um, I wanted to discuss Valentine's Day and all the other uh, issues I had with uh, last week's podcast. So I decided not to go ahead with it because, which is funny because I was so worried last week, excuse me, so worried last week with um, being under time, and I feel like I might be under time again, but what is under time? The time limit's essentially up to me, so does under time even mean anything in this regard? Um, but yeah, I also decided not to talk about it because I, I kind of wanted to rewatch the video once or twice, which I ended up doing today, um, just to make sure I got the full idea of the video and so I could reiterate it. Um, knowing fully what the, what the message or messages behind the video were and, um, um, sorry, I just got sidetracked because I just realized I wanted to bring up something else about this mic. Um, just, it's kind of just setting in that I'm hearing the voice that you all are used to hearing. Um, when I speak for those of you who know me in day to day life and honestly, um, I don't like this voice that much, but now that I'm hearing it so much within these last few minutes, I'm kind of getting used to it, but it also kind of, um, brings me to another reason that I'm glad I have a new mic is, um, one of the things with this whole podcast project that I kind of started up was I wanted to be able to get used to talking behind a microphone. Cause I've always thought the idea of voice acting to be very interesting, at least over the last few years, especially when you have a soothing low voice such as my own. But uh, I also thought, it was, uh, I think it's pretty cool to be able to see voice actors kind of manipulate their voice and be able to put on these different characters um, through the media that they're portraying it in based on purely their voice and what, what the artist is able to do, depending on what medium it is, whether it's cartoons or... Um, uh, video games or animated movies. Um, I've always thought that was very interesting, especially when you look at like, no names in particular, but if you have a favorite voice actor and they're not using their normal voice, or even if they're using their normal day-to-day -day voice, but they have like a tinge to it or something, I always find that very interesting because, um, you know, seeing them and seeing a picture of them in person or seeing them use the voice that you always hear associated with a different character. Um, I just find that to be pretty interesting. So I like that idea and I'd like with, with this setup, I can, I don't know if I would do anything with it, but just the fact that I have this sort of weekly project podcast dealio, I'm able to at least be comfortable with talking to a microphone. Cause I feel like that's, that's part of the reason why actors and voice actors and, and, and YouTubers and, those sort of entertainers are so good at what they do is because they're used to either being behind a camera or being behind a microphone or, or performing in front of an audience. I feel like when most people are put on the spot, they're not, they're not, um, prepared. So to say, like if you ever put a camera in front of somebody, um, I always feel like most people kind of freeze up and they always kind of act with the fact that they have a camera in mind but I feel like with, excuse me, with most actors, voice actors, etc., they're kind of used to that at that point, and they know how to use that to their advantage, or they're, they're at least comfortable with the situation, because I feel like a lot of people get awkward or uncomfortable with um, just having eyes on them, like recorded eyes, like a recorded camera, a recording camera, or a microphone you kind of sit down in front of somebody says oh uh, do this do that you're kind of like oh it always feels kind of fake it kind of forced if that makes any sense so yeah i'm glad i have this new setup now it's pretty rad um yeah i kind of derailed there but i remember making that a point and i didn't write it down on my list of things to talk about um but yeah, I feel like that that's how a lot of people strive in the entertainment business. Um, because most people start off, whatever it is, you always have to start off somewhere. And nobody, I imagine 99.9% .9 of people who start in a career in anything never start great at it or even good at it. 
So there's always those first few awkward steps. Um, like I'd, I'd like, I'd like to even think that I've improved over this last month of just recording, um, whether it's noticeable or not, I can, I'm, I'm, I'm more easily able to kind of jump into this role, so to speak, um, for lack of a better term. But yeah, enough about that garbage. Um, let's move on to what I was talking about. So a video I saw, uh, before last week's recording, uh, this YouTuber I follow, um, Satch, oh shit, I can't believe I forgot his name. Um, I think it's Satch Bag Goods. I'm going to check just in case. I hope this isn't. No. Uh, excuse me, folks. This is terrible. You are terrible. Talking to myself, not, not, I just, oh, Jesus. I am terrible. I apologize for this. Uh, keyboard shouldn't be too taken up. I just want to get, yeah, Sash Bags Goods, that's the channel name. I think I got too close to the mic there, excuse me. Um, I've been following him for a while, and I really enjoy his content. He was the, um, uh, I actually mentioned one of his videos a few episodes ago when I was discussing the video game, that Dragon Cancer. Um, I mentioned watching a video uh, discussing and kind of, uh, studying the game as a whole <clears throat> i didn't mention the actual youtuber itself but i feel like it's necessary now since i'm actually talking about his full video um i really like the stuff he makes he always likes to go in depth and analyze certain aspects of whether it's full games or just certain aspect of a game it's a video game channel obvious obviously because what other channels would i watch on youtube but just to make that clear um Strictly talks about video games and video game design and uh, other aspects of that. Excuse me. That was me. Um, but he's been doing a few videos recently where he kind of vlogs, if that, uh, for lack of a better term. It's kind of him just on a soapbox, kind of just discussing something. And he released a video recently asking if, um, if we're too inspired or something along those lines. If we, if we're, uh, people get too inspired too easily in this day and age with social media and such. Um, and he starts off by saying that um, I'm going to link this in the description and I highly suggest. I'm also going to talk about another video and I'm going to link that in the description of whatever medium this gets posted on. I highly suggest you um, check both those videos out because I'm going to be skimming over what he discusses and he goes into better detail about it. Um, and I'm mainly just talking about this video cause I, I, I agree with it because I've found myself, um, with this problem and he sort of, um, discusses a few points and, but he starts off by saying that, um, I'm saying I'm way too much. I'm just trying to remember this video, even though I just watched it a few hours ago. <clears throat> but yeah, he goes on to discuss that, uh, He's always seen comments um, back in the day saying people are inspired and by stuff posted on the internet and they go out and inspires them to go and make something or start a career in whatever uh, sort of art form that's being commented on. And he's noticed, at least to himself, he says himself he hasn't really made any stats on it or anything, but... To him, it seemed like he seen, he's seen these comments kind of double, but the amount of people who have actually gone through and actually created more than just like a simple um, web page or channel page with no real content to it, people have actually made something, whether it's terrible or great. Um, um, he's noticed that there's been the same number of people who've actually gone and created a uh, actual career or at least attempted to make something out of being inspired. Um, but he's seen the kind of comments of people saying, Oh, you've inspired me to make this. You've inspired me to start a career in that kind of thing. Um, has doubled. Jeez, I'm getting in a loop right now. This is ridiculous. But one of the main points he brings up is, uh, he essentially goes on to say that 
And he quotes some um, designer, creative director, I can't remember, quite a few times in this video. And the, the main point he gets at with uh, quoting this guy and what he goes on to say is essentially um, there's two aspects. There's, there's two issues with people being inspired. And um, the first one that he discusses is the fact that um, people get too ambitious um, he uses the term idea debt, um, which he takes from this guy that he quotes. And it's essentially being so ambitious with your idea. You have a thought of what you want to go through with, but then you don't go through with it or you try to go through with it, but you never actually complete it because it's not what you had in your mind. It's not the idea you had, um, in your head as to like what you envision like you if you envision a video or you envision a, a picture or something and it's just not up to snuff to what you had in mind and i've had that happen uh i feel like every time i draw anything i feel like that issue happens with me i, env I envision this picture in my mind and then when i actually draw it out whether it's close to completion or not close to completion um i can sort of start to notice that the artistic style in my head does not at all match the artistic style in my mind. Which now that I think about it, I should really just start lining those up, shouldn't I? Um, but it's hard to do because I envision this uh, masterpiece, if you will, and then I start drawing it out. And in my mind, the drawing shit because it's not what I envisioned in initially, but I can show it to friends or uh, whoever and they can say it looks good, but to me, I'm just like, eh, uh, I don't know. That's kind of shit. But I still end up finishing the drawing or whatever because I just like, I just like the act of drawing. Um, but he brings up a good point, which is he knows this uh, woman that he used to work with. And she always referred to this quote whenever they were working on a project, which is, um, done is better than perfect. Um, which I actually wrote that down and I actually put it on my desktop because, um, he mentions that she has that exact quote on her desktop too. And I think it's a really great one to do. And he also quotes that, um, creative director, whoever he is, a uh, Japanese man. Um, I mean, I'm assuming his name, he's Japanese man. It, his name sounded like it was Japanese. I could just be coming off. It's extremely racist right now. But that's besides the point. Um, uh, he also goes off to quote this guy um, saying along the lines of we shouldn't want to um, be excited about like the end product. We should be excited about the moment to moment um, little things that we're adding onto this project, however big or small it is, which I also think is a good point to add. You kind of combine those two and you have a completely different um, ideology when it comes to working on something, whether it be a small project or a huge project. Um, but I really like that quote, done is better than perfect, because it really just kind of slams home that you should just finish it, regardless of how shit it is or how close it is to perfect. Sometimes you just got to um, bite the bullet and just commit to it. And then he also brings on a second point um, with all this social media going around in an article he read. And I remember reading a similar article. Uh, it was probably not the exact same article, but the article I read was probably referring to the article he was discussing. And, and he also uses that uh, guy that he keeps quoting again um, because he also... Um, brings this up which is essentially with all the social media and stuff going on it's so much easier to say hey world i'm going to do a thing and you should all be happy for me because i'm going to do a thing and as opposed to being like hey world i've done a thing because um uh, there was a study done by i think he says harvard um or so somebody somebody along those lines but i've heard this i've heard this um study before and essentially just telling people that you're going to go to do a thing um, sends an endor endor endorphin rush um, from your brain or to your brain. I can't remember how endorphins work. Doesn't matter. Not a neuroscientist. I think you, I, I can let this one slide. 
uh, sends it to your brain and just makes you feel good because it's like, oh, yes, I'm going to go do a thing and I feel good because I'm going to do the thing. But then you sit down on your ass and you don't actually do the thing, but you still feel good from just being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do a thing. But then you don't actually do the thing, which is the problem, obviously. And um, I'm not afraid to admit that I've definitely done that two or three times in my life. Just kind of hype myself up and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go do a thing and it's going to be super awesome and successful or whatever the hell it's going to be. And I even feel like even if I don't tell people that, um, I do that enough in my head that I probably still send those endorphins through my body anyways just because I get this idea in my head of what I'm going to do and how successful and amazing it's going to be and all this jazz. But, you know, with this project... I kind of told myself a few times I should go through with it, but I also kept telling myself I kind of was kind of putting myself down so that I wouldn't get that endorphin rush. And I tried to make sure to tell as few people as possible before I started. I just told a few friends, a few close buddies, excuse me, hold on. Mm -hmm. Just burped. And I do not want that picking up because it's pretty gruesome. Maybe I'll put up that burp sample on SoundCloud or whatever, so you guys can hear it. Yeah. I uh, didn't want that picking up, though. Um, I told a few people just as more of an idea kind of thing, just being like, oh, would this, do you guys think I should go through with this? I kind of want to go through with this kind of thing. Not more of a, hey, guys, I'm going to do it. Which is partially why I started with uh, minimal equipment, is because I wanted to make sure also that I was committed to it. I feel like the fact that it was just this random idea that popped in my head, which I didn't have high hope for, high hopes for in terms of like uh, making it big, whatever that means for a podcast. But I feel like that also kind of helped too, and also not just dropping it on social media or whatever. That was also a, a a big help in it. Because I'm actually glad that I started it now as opposed to the possibility of me being like, hey, world, I'm going to do the podcast thing and then have a bunch of people be like, whoa, cool. Instead, I just like the week before I did the recording, when I had the idea, I just kind of kept telling myself, like, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Every time I thought about it, like I should just do it ASAP. I should just not think about it and just do it, which I feel like. And the, re the reason I bring up this video is I feel like that's his main point for all of uh, for these two main points. I feel like those are the only two main points of the video. I could be missing a third one, but he definitely he definitely um, discusses those two very heavily. And I feel like as much as his video is kind of titled to kind of be like, are we too inspired too often kind of thing? It's weirdly an inspirational video because it's kind of at the core of it. It's kind of like, just do it. If it's shit, whatever, you're going to improve as long as you keep doing it. And um, don't like be an asshole and just be like, I'm going to do a thing world. Like nobody cares. Just do it. And then if it's good, people will give a shit kind of thing. Not to that. um not to that sternness and aggressiveness of it, but that's that's essentially what I took from it was just do it. Don't sue me, Nike, please. But, you know, just go through with whatever you've been thinking about doing. And I feel like I need to kind of keep that mentality in mind because I feel like that has been working better for me than previous endeavors where I've kind of hyped it up on social media or finally finished it and then thought it was shit. I've kind of gotten back in that point in my mind where I'm really wanting to jump into new things and just keep working at them. Even if they don't get better, I just kind of like the idea of going back all the way to my first podcast. I really like the idea that of just making something, you know, just going out there and making something. And I'm kind of at that point right now. So I feel like I really need to stick to that advice. And that's why I mentioned I've bought some other hardware, but I really don't want to get into the nitty gritty of what I'm doing because I don't want to um, 
be that social media guy who says, hey, get world, I'm going to do a thing. I should honestly just go through with it. Like, screw it, whatever. And that's honestly what I kind of did with the whole drawing thing that I was talking about in my first episode as well. I always had the idea of, I've been on and off drawing for a few years, nothing too, um, like intensive. And I was, I've never been a major artist, so to speak. It was always kind of just like, cause of comic books and stuff. And I've honestly never even read that many comic books. It was more just like newspaper comics and stuff. I always thought those were like goofy and cool. And then I know, I know superhero comic books were a thing. So I always thought that was a really cool thing. I never went fully through with it when I was younger. I thought that was really cool. So I have a, I used to have some, not intense, but I'd have those like drawing pencils with like the, the lead types or whatever, just average lead types, nothing insane and a drawing book. And I still have that drawing book and I decided to get back into that recently, uh, recently being uh, a few years ago and it's been on and off for the last few years or so. And then when I was thinking of stuff to ask for for Christmas, I've for like the past year or so, I've been having an idea of being like, maybe I should get back into drawing, which I've done, but bring it to the digital age, start like invest in a um, drawing tablet. Um, wow, I've been talking for a while. I don't know if I'm going to bring up that other video. Oh, shit. I've been talking for a while. Oh, no. This is going to take forever to upload if I keep talking. Ugh. Ah, whatever. Um, I'll stop it when I stop it. But yeah, that was kind of on the spur thing. Just trying to end this discussion of what the hell I'm talking about. I kind of just, for a while, I've been like, ooh, the drawing tablet would be cool. But those things seem kind of expensive. But then I found a decent like beginner one online and decided to asked for that for Christmas and ended up getting it. And I just started drawing. And for about two weeks after Christmas, it's, it felt like a drawing day day and it's definitely diminished now, but I definitely still like the accessibility of just picking up and drawing whenever I don't go online and be like, guys, I'm going to start a blog and I'm going to put all my cool drawings on there. And all it's just like, I make it and maybe I'll Snapchat it to somebody of a, a friend or whatever to be like oh look at this cool drawing but like other than that I kind of just save it and it goes into the drawing folder on my computer and I've also been drawing for every episode I've been coming up with a new I wouldn't say logo but just some new sort of background for my video uploads of um, this podcast which is also just <clears throat> excuse me also just kind of kept me using the tablet it's not anything intense and it's not anything creative. It's just the word slam cast with some retarded background, <laughs> but I mean, Hey, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to improve greatly because of it, but you know, it's, it's soothing. It's relaxing. Um, so I have two topics here. I don't know if I should just leave them until next week. I feel like that's kind of a bad idea though. Uh, I might just leave the second topic uh, to next week. I'm not going to mention it now, just in case I never bring it up next week. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over this though. Just trying to make it in a few minutes, but this other video from bite sized psych, uh, channel talks about how, and this also kind of relates to, um, what I was talking about with the previous video, um, talking about how we shouldn't listen to successful people because you know, when you see those articles or you see interviews and it's like, Oh, what did this successful person do? Or, Oh, what did these successful companies do to succeed? Um, kind of thing. He essentially debunks that whole logic of, Oh, they're successful. So I should listen to what they do because clearly following that will bring me success mainly because you should also look at, the people who failed and see because chances are they've done similar or the exact same thing as the person who succeeded. They just weren't lucky or just something got in their way or something. So it's always good to see how somebody succeeded, but it's also good to see how somebody else failed. Um, and you can kind of, you're able to more easily balance those out because if you just look at everybody who succeeded, you get this very distorted view of how to succeed and what success is. 
Whereas if you look at failures, um, it kind of balances that out because maybe they both have the exact same um, um, strategies, just the successful person uh, was in a different geological location or started their company at the optimal time kind of thing. Or maybe they were just lucky. And he, this um, guy, I don't know what his name is, or maybe he does introduce himself at the beginning of the video and I just didn't listen. Whatever. My bad. Um, he does a good example where he says, you could talk to a happily married couple and ask them how they stayed happily married and they could probably give you a good piece of advice, but um, it'd be a better idea to compare their just them in general with people who are angry, not angry, but people are divorced and had bad divorces because of bad marriages kind of thing. And he goes on to talk about this one study and I know it's just one study, but it still, um, brings up his point and it kind of validates his point to a degree where if you compare happily married couples to divorced couples on in general, the people in happily married couples are, just rate themselves as happier in general in life. Whereas the people who are divorced just in general or are sadder or more depressed, just about everything in general. It's not necessarily about the marriage. It's about just the people in the marriage. So it's always good to essentially, you get that good balance, essentially what it comes down to. And I really think you should also check out his video, which I'll put in my description. Um, because, like I said, I'm just talking about these videos because I, I agree with them um, uh, more than I disagree with them, obviously. Um, and if I were to disagree with them, I'd make that very clear. Um, but I really think you should check them out because I feel like both these videos can really help broaden the mental, mental spectrum on how we look at things, whether it's um, starting projects and being successful, because I feel like those two are somewhat not mutual or is it mutual when they're different oh god i sound like an idiot right now i feel like being successful at starting a project are kind of intertwined um but then again it also depends on what you um what's the word what you oh, i'm not really gonna just end the video with this what you determine successful in this project that you're starting or in this project that you have working on, like, um, honestly with this podcast, I don't really have any sort of end goal or any sort of successful sort of end point. I honestly feel like this podcast is already pretty successful because I feel like I'm learning from it and I have my friends and family looking at it. It might not be all of my friends and all of my family, but just a few of them and Honestly, that's honestly just going to keep saying honestly until the world ends because that's what I really wanted out of, man, it was, took me, that was really hard. I was trying not to say honestly in that sentence and that took all of my brain power. And like I was saying, um, that was what I was really looking for in this podcast thing is just have a few friends and a few family members maybe look at it if they really want to or listen to it, I guess. They wouldn't really be looking at it, would they? And just for me to kind of get more comfortable with a sort of media-oriented project or just a project in general. But yeah, with that being said, let's see what time we're at. Oh no, 35 minutes. YouTube's going to take forever. Whatever. SoundCloud takes five seconds. Not even a problem. With that being said, folks, I hope you enjoyed this week's ultra, um, ultra, hold on, let me, let me get this open. The ultra, ultra detailed, uh, slam cast over here. Cause now we got the new microphone. Everything is amazing. I had to put the game down a bit there. I didn't want to blow out your ear holes. So anyways, I hope you all have a great week or a great day whenever you're listening to this. I don't care. I just hope you have a good good old time. And I really need to find some sort of end, end 
end catchphrase to kind of end this on. I've really been thinking, I haven't been thinking about one, but I feel like most vloggers and YouTubers and podcasters always have some sort of, hey, see you on the flip side. I should, ugh, I should just make it something brutally nasty. Hey, don't kill yourself. No, that's bad. I'm not gonna, <laughs> that's bad. Anyways, have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful week. Uh, have a beautiful time. Talk to y'all later.